first experience in Vietnam uh, was uh, very disappointing. Uh, I'm an infantry officer and I was initially assigned to uh, a force logistics command where I was in supply battalion. Uh, so that was a very frustrating uh, experience for me in one way because I was an infantryman wanting to be out in the field. But in retrospect, it turned out to be probably a, a great experience because one, it gave me a whole another dimension of what the Marine Corps uh, was about. And secondly, it provided an acclimation period where I was able to get uh, acclimated to uh, Vietnam uh, and how it, how it was, you know, in the heat and, and all of that. So when I did get out and take over a rifle company at the end of January 1968, um, even though I was new to the field, uh, I wasn't new to Vietnam. Well, when I arrived, I was the most unhappy camper in the world because I had orders to the 1st Marine Division and as we were boarding the aircraft to fly to Vietnam, okay, Major, you've got a change of orders. You're going to headquarters 3 MAF as the embarkation officer. And that just broke my heart because I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be in an infantry battalion as a, a battalion XO or a S3 or some major job. So I made a pest of myself. I put in for a transfer every month. The remembrances of Way uh, take, take a number of different um, visions uh, within my mind, so to speak. Uh, first of all, I have to tell you that uh, everybody saw the battle a little bit different. Um, I can tell you without lying whatsoever what was happening about 10 feet around me. Uh, if you asked me what was going on 20 feet from me, uh, on some occasions I couldn't tell you. So sometimes what happens uh, is that one individual has one view of what happened uh, and I have another view of what happened. Uh, as the company commander, uh, I tried to maintain the big picture of what was happening uh, within the company, uh, but that was difficult at times because of the intensity of the action uh, that was occurring. My battalion surgeon told me how disheartened that he was that a good many of our Marines died before they could be evacuated. There were three days there, we went without food. Troops didn't like that. They said, it's not right that we go, go die on an empty stomach. Well, the food, I had uh, three days in my pack, but I was so busy the first three days trying to get thing unscrewed that I didn't have time to eat. Then when everybody else ran out of food, I was hungry. But I couldn't eat in front of hungry Marines, so I had to pass out my, my food uh, to some of the radio men. So really it's six days without food. But you could go a long way, a long time without food. It was a challenging thing from a, a both a mental point of view and emotional point of view. Uh, but one of the good news that, that I had was that as a company commander, uh, I can't think about myself. I was having to think about uh, the individual Marines in the company. I was having to think about the mission and the accomplishment of that mission without you know, decimating uh, the company. So you don't think about yourself, you think about everybody else. And then at the end of the battle, then that's when you shake and you worry, <laughs> what did I do and how did I do it and why am I still here?